Welcome to Cooking with Kathy. I'm Kathy Mitchell. Now you've probably seen me in a lot of kitchens, but today we're at my house in my actual kitchen and we're going to learn how to use one of the most unique kitchen products I've ever found, Micro Crisp. This is going to change the way you cook with your microwave forever. So let's take a look at what you got. First of all, you've got two rolls of Micro Crisp. This special material actually changes the microwaves into thermal energy. So it actually creates a little mini oven around your food. Now since that oven does get hot, you'll always want to use the special micro crisp rack. Ordinary microwave cookware is not designed to withstand the heat that the micro crisp creates. So whenever you're using the micro crisp, be sure you're using the special rack. Now you also got an excellent cookbook. But you're obviously one of those people that would rather see it than read about it. So let's start with some basics. Okay, now there are a couple of things I find absolutely essential for cooking with Micro Crisp. First, a good pair of scissors, and second, some tape. Now, when I say scissors, I don't mean those kitchen scissors that don't cut anything. Get yourself a good, sharp pair of scissors, because I use these for everything from trimming up, uh, trimming the fat off of meat and snipping bacon to cutting up little pieces of vegetables and trimming your Micro Crisp down to size. And at the end of the day, they can go right in the dishwasher. By the way, put a little bit of uh, nail polish on your scissors so your kids know that those don't leave the kitchen. Now, the tape can be any kind of tape, but it's just the best way to hold the Micro Crisp around the food. First, let's talk about microwaves. The times for the recipes in the cookbook are all based on using about a 700 watt microwave. Now, without getting into a lot of math to figure out your wattage, here's an easy way for you to determine what uh, power setting to use on your microwave. What you want to do is find out what power setting will bring one cup of water to a boil in three minutes, and that's the setting you're going to use to cook the recipes in the book. Now, on this one, to boil that water in three minutes takes a power of 80%. And I know that that's the setting I'm going to use every time I follow one of the recipes in the cookbook. Now, if you have an older microwave that's maybe less than 700 watts, there's also a handy chart that'll tell you how much time to add so that you can use the recipes in your microwave as well. Now, there are a number of different types of wrap, wrapping that we're going to use for the Micro Crisp. And the first one I call the basic wrap. This is the one you're going to use for meats or poultry or wrapping leftovers like this pizza here. Now, of course, anybody that's ever wrapped presents knows the easiest thing to wrap is something square. So if you put those little wedges like that, it gives you nice square edges to wrap. And then all you have to do is wrap the Micro Crisp one piece over the other. Now, remember, you don't want a lot of overlap. Otherwise, the Micro Crisp just ends up cooking itself. And a little piece of tape holds it all closed. Now all you have to do is set it on the rack and pop that in the microwave for about 30 or 40 seconds. You know, this lets you take advantage of those two-for-one pizza specials because pizza wrapped and reheated in Micro Crisp comes out just as good as when they first delivered it, probably a little bit hotter. <laughs> All right, next I want to show you the diaper wrap. Now, this is the wrap you're going to use any time you're reheating a sandwich or anything with an already baked bread, like a bagel or a croissant. Now, what I've got here is a frozen cheeseburger. You know, you don't have to buy these in a box. Every time you have a barbecue, just make as many burgers as you have buns. Assemble any leftovers and go ahead and wrap them and freeze them. Now, when somebody wants a cheeseburger, it's as easy as this. Just pull off a square of Micro Crisp and lay that cheeseburger right in the center. Now. Diaper wrap, pull in one corner, then the other, and then pull up the bottom. You moms and dads will be familiar with this, except that the, at least the sandwich doesn't kick. Now, one little piece of tape should hold that right on there like that. And that's frozen solid. It's going to take about two minutes to heat. If you took this for lunch, you'd have a chance to thaw out before you cooked it. It'd probably reheat in just about a minute at lunchtime. So two minutes. <laughs> Okay, there's our cheeseburger, hot off the grill. This is such an easy way to fix lunch. You only have to do it once a week and you can eat the rest of the week. Look at this. Oh, yes. See, and the bun is still nice and soft and the cheese is all melted. And all you have to add is some lettuce and tomato and you've got lunch. This is great for when your kids come home starving from school. Okay. 
Next, I want to show you what we call the tube wrap. Now, you're going to use this for your shish kebabs, your dippity dogs, anything that's kind of round. And it's an excellent way to cook a baked potato. Now, you want to pull off a piece of just about the same width as your potato. You know, I think most of us have used the microwave out of desperation to cook a baked potato, but it just doesn't taste like it came out of the oven. When you use micro crisp, the, it'll take an extra couple of minutes over what it used to take in the microwave, but the difference is well worth it. Now, what you want to do is wrap it tightly. Remember, you always want the micro crisp touching the food. And we don't want too much overlap, so if you have a little extra there, go ahead and trim it away. You know, I'm a saver, and I save these little pieces, because you never know when someday you're going to wrap it around and you won't have quite enough to reach. You'll be glad you had that little piece. And a little piece of tape here. Now, I like to kind of crimp the ends over like I was wrapping it in foil. Makes them bake nice and evenly. And as I said, that's going to take an extra couple of minutes, but it's well worth the difference. Now, I have a recipe I want to show you where I use those baked potatoes. And this is a recipe for what I call a potato skin casserole. Now, I went ahead and baked these earlier so we could do this a little quicker. And let me cut off that micro crisp. You see, these are, potatoes look just like they came out of an oven, and they are wonderful and fluffy. Now, I have never figured out where they get potato skins, so my recipe uses the whole potato. And let's get rid of that little end there. It doesn't look real appetizing. Just trim that away. You know, when I was a kid, I always thought that they must get potato skins from what people left on their plates after they ate dinner, but I guess that's probably not true. All right. Now, I've got a casserole dish here, and all I'm going to do is go ahead and lay these uh, sections right in the dish there. And then just take a little fork and kind of smash them down a little bit. These are actually a lot better because they've got a lot more body to them than just the skins. You've got a lot of meat there. It's very filling. This is an excellent, excellent snack or a quick lunch for the kids. OK. Now, I like to drizzle a little bit of melted margarine across there. I'm going to cheat today and just use this little tube kind here. And then we want to add some grated cheese. And I like lots of cheese. Now, potato skins wouldn't be potato skins without a little crumbled bacon. So let me show you a fast, easy way to make that crumbled bacon in your microwave. What I do is I take a little pie plate and line it with a paper towel. That catches the drips. And this is just a little colander. Set it right in there. Now, I use my scissors to snip the bacon. And all I do is go right along it like this depending on how much you need. I use this when I make fried rice or baked beans, any time you need a little crisp crumbled bacon. Now, that'll, bake in the, that'll uh, fry up in the microwave in about three minutes. All the grease will drain away, and it looks just like this when you're done. And real easy garnish for salads or anything that needs a little crumbled bacon. Now, this is where we're going to use the micro crisp to brown the top of a casserole. So what you want to do is pull off just about the length of the casserole. Now, since this is an oval dish, I'm going to have to trim this down a little bit. Remember, any time you're cooking with this microcrisp, you want to be sure you're using an oven-proof dish. Because any place where the microcrisp touches the dish, it's going to get very, very hot. So you want to be sure you have an oven-safe dish. Now, I'm just going to trim away the edges and kind of round it off a little bit so this will fit right on top. And that should lay right on top of there. Maybe it's just a little bit long. Let's get rid of that little edge there. OK, that's just about perfect. Now, again, you want to keep that micro crisp touching the food. So here's a place where you'll actually use your rack upside down on top of the micro crisp. That helps hold it down against the food. Remember, only the micro crisp rack is made to withstand the heat from the micro crisp. So don't use like just a little glass plate or something to do that. Always use your micro crisp rack. Now, that's going to go into the oven for just about three minutes, just long enough to kind of brown up the cheese. OK, those should be ready. And believe me, you'll need some hot pads because these dishes are hot. OK. Oh, <laughs> those look great. Now, this may not be the neatest snack you ever had, but then when was anything that was neat good to eat? Let me slap this right on the plate there. Now, I've got a little bit of ranch dressing in that bowl in the center. 
They didn't tell me this was string cheese. <laughs> now we know why restaurants always do this in the back room. Okay. All right, now I like to garnish that with just a little bit of chopped green onion. And again, those trusty scissors. It's the easiest way to do it. Just snip them on there. One more. Now these are terrific for a snack or an appetizer, or with a salad, you've got a super light dinner. Okay, let's do some baking. You know, in this day and age, you don't even have to own a rolling pin to do any baking. Like my mother thinks this is the way to make apple pie. But these have to bake in a 475 degree oven for 25 minutes, and who wants to wait that long for dessert? Micro crisp for the rescue. I sent her a box, and she loves it. Now, not only do you not need a rolling pin to bake, you don't even need an oven. Now, remember, when you're cooking a raw dough, you want to spray a little bit of Pam on that micro crisp. And we're going to use what we call an airplane wrap at our house. Lay that guy down on there. This works great for anything that's triangular. Fold in the corners like you're making a little paper airplane, and then just roll it over on itself. Now, everything here is excess, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off, and we can use that for a smaller job down the road. Now, one of these is going to bake in just four minutes. If you want to bake two at once, just add half again the time, or six minutes for two. We're just baking one today. Save a little time, so let's pop it in there. Four minutes at 80%. Ah, perfect. You know, this is so incredible. You can bake these like this in just whew, four minutes. And look how flaky that crust is. Now, that looks as good as one that ever came out of the oven, and this will make it look even better. Now, doesn't that look great? When I first started testing microcrisp, one of the first things I tried was something my family loves but takes a long time to cook, these refrigerator doughs. Besides, it makes me feel like kind of a rebel because the can says they won't go in the microwave. Now, these are the little crescent rolls. And I'm just going to go ahead and use part of the can today. And anything you don't use, go ahead and put in plastic wrap, and you can store in the refrigerator for a couple of days. Now, my kids love what we call dippity dogs. They're the old uh, hot dog wrapped in a crescent roll trick, but they took about 20 minutes in a real hot oven. So let me show you how fast you can do it with micro crisp. All I'm doing is taking one of the crescent rolls and wrapping it around a hot dog. And now we're going to grab the micro crisp. Now, anytime you're cooking a raw dough, you're going to want to spray with just a little bit of a nonstick spray, some Pam or whatever. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. I always spray before I cut. That way I'm not spraying itty bitty pieces. And now all we have to do is go ahead and wrap one of these guys up in here. Now this is where a little piece of tape comes in real handy to help hold that closed. So I'll just grab a little piece of scotch tape and right at that seam line there and then right onto the rack. And you notice I'm not using too much micro crisp. You don't want a lot of overlap, you don't, because it'll cook itself if you overlap the paper. So you just want just enough to go around. Now, that would normally take 20 minutes in about a 400 degree oven. But that's going to cook because of that micro crisp in my microwave in just two minutes. Now, remember the power level, 80% on this one, two minutes for that guy. Now, I've got a quick uh, treat to show you how to use up the rest of these here. I, you may remember this from the television commercial. We call it hot apple pie on a stick. And what I do is take an apple. You could do this with a pear or a peach or a nectarine or whatever. But of course, apples seem to be everybody's favorite. And I found this great little gadget. My kids eat a whole lot more apples since I found this little guy. It cores it and cuts it into little sections all at the same time. Now, this is a little bag. I've got about a half a cup of, of a sugar and just maybe a teaspoon or so of cinnamon. And I'm going to go ahead and drop those apple sections in there. And we'll just use part of it today and go ahead and give that a little bit of a shake. You want to coat those with the cinnamon and sugar. Now, the easiest way to deal with dough, remember those kitchen scissors, I want to cut these just in half. So I'm dealing with just a little bit smaller section of dough here. So just a little cut there. And now, all we got to do is grab one of these little apple sections and go ahead and roll it up in that dough. Get a couple of them out of there. 
These are dynamite with fresh peaches. And these are so much better for the kids than the stuff you buy at the store. So much of that it has a lot of uh, chemicals and preservatives in it. I just like the fact that these are a nice natural snack. And really, the kids enjoy making these for themselves. OK, now remember, you don't have to cut up the micro crisp into tiny little pieces. It's OK to put everything in one roll. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave this piece whole. Go ahead and spray it with that, that uh, Pam. And then just line the little apples right up alongside each other. Now this is the tube wrap we talked about. Just roll it in a little tube. And that little piece of tape, I'm going to go ahead and put two on there, one at each end. And that's going to bake in the microwave again. In just two minutes, we're going to have what we call hot apple pie on a stick. Up, we're right on time. We've only got about five seconds left for these dogs here. There's the bell. All right. Ooh, those look great. Let me sneak those off, and we'll get this apple pie in. Two minutes on that one. OK, let's take a look at these. Remember, these took only two minutes. Oh, look how beautiful and brown those are. Those look great. Now, my kids call these dippity dogs because they like to dip them in some kind of a sauce, whether it's ketchup or barbecue sauce, or my favorite is probably mustard. OK, there's the bell. Boy, the whole kitchen smells like apple pie, and I didn't even have to bake. It's a great way to make your family think you've been cooking all day. Now, let's take a look at these. Oh, those are great. They're all gooey and wonderful. Hot apple pie on a stick, all you have to do is stab it with a toothpick. And you're ready to go there. Like I said, these are so much better than anything that you can buy at the store for your kids, and they taste great. You know, as simple as these are, they're even a great company dessert. You can serve them right alongside a bowl of vanilla ice cream, and they'll think you baked all day. Okay, I have one last thing that you can't cook in the microwave. Call it an alarm clock in a can. This is the best way to get your kids downstairs in the morning. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and do four of these cinnamon rolls. And again, you can store whatever you don't use in a little plastic bag in the refrigerator. Now, the micro crisp, because we're using an, an un, uh, uncooked dough, we're going to spray with a little of that nonstick spray. And go ahead and place four of them right in the middle there. Now, because these are going to rise while they bake, we want to leave just a little bit of space for rising and a little piece of tape. And onto the tray. Now, these would normally take about 20 minutes in a 375 degree oven. That's why we used to save them for Sunday mornings. Now they're going to cook two and a half minutes. So you can have them every day of the week if you want. OK, there's the bell. Oh, if that smell doesn't bring them down from upstairs, nothing will. Let's take a look at these guys. Ah, those are beautiful. You know, these actually cook up, I think, higher and lighter than the ones you bake in the oven. And they're so moist. And we'll just get some frosting on them. Oh, these look delicious. This is such a fast breakfast. And these cooked in about a tenth the time they would have ordinarily taken in the uh, regular oven. So there's a real quick breakfast. Now, you just serve that with a little fruit and a glass of milk, and it's a great nourishing breakfast. Now, if you remember the hidden camera segment of the Microcrisp show, you saw a lot of women getting very excited about something they were tasting. Well, they were trying my chicken wellington, probably the last thing you'd ever expect to be able to bake in the microwave. Now, don't let the fancy name scare you. You can make anything wellington by simply wrapping it in a pastry shell. And you can use a pie crust or a phyllo dough. I love using these puff pastry sheets because they're convenient and I can keep them right in the freezer. Now, these come two in a package. And all you do is unroll one and let it thaw for about 20 minutes. Now, this one's just about ready, so let's get started on the filling. OK, now you can follow along with this recipe if you want to in the cookbook. What we're going to do is we're going to saute a little bit of onion and mushroom in just a little bit of butter. Some chopped mushrooms and some onions. And I'm going to add just a little bit of parsley.
and kind of stir that around. Now this doesn't take very long. Now today I'm going to use these little, some little chicken tenders in here, but if you want to use leftover chicken or leftover turkey, that works great as well. So it's a good way to get rid of, uh, especially leftover turkey. It's wonderful with turkey in it. Let me just get these uh, started a little bit. And remember, these are going to cook a little bit more when we wrap them in the pastry shell, so you don't have to get everything real done before you fill your pastry. Okay, that's just about ready. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull these back, and I'm going to put the chicken right in the same pan. I've never seen any need for dirtying up more than one pan, <laughs> unless I have to. So we're going to drop these little chickens in here. Now this is just a boneless chicken breast piece. And you want to lightly saute those on either side with maybe just a little bit of seasoning. And these won't take very long. Just about. Oh, that smells wonderful. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and flip those over now. And we'll give those just about another minute, and they should be ready to go. Okay, now we just want to roll this out just a little bit larger. And then we're going to divide it into four pieces. Kind of keep it as square as we can there. All right. Now, this is a handy little gadget. Not much good for cutting pizza, but great for cutting this kind of dough. And we'll just divide it into four sections. Now, I'm going to pull those aside for now, and we'll work on these two first. And let me go ahead and uh, spread on some of this. Now, this is the filling. This, this is part of the filling. This is just some cream cheese that I've mixed with a little uh, sweet hot mustard. And we're just going to go ahead and spread that right in the center of each of those squares. And now we're ready for our chicken. All right, now we just want to put one of those little tenders right there on each side. One extra, guess I'll have to eat that one. And this is our mushroom and onion and parsley right on top of that. This is such a great company dish, and you can make them up ahead of time. You know, you can make these in the morning or when you've got some extra time and wrap them in plastic and keep them right in the refrigerator. Now, all you have to do is fold up your dough around the side. Go ahead and stretch it a little bit if it won't fit. And just like playing with Play-Doh, you want to add a little bit of water to seal up that, uh, that edge and fold that up. And a little on this end. If you can get them that far, you can wrap them in plastic wrap and they'll store in your refrigerator or your freezer for a, a quick meal anytime you need it. Let's get this last guy done. Don't be afraid to stretch that dough and work with it a little bit. And don't be afraid of that water, because that's what keeps it from popping back open after you get it all sealed up. Okay. Now, I'm not going to waste those other two pieces of dough. I want to show you how you can make a fast dessert. You know, we cooked those apple turnovers earlier, and I love them, but I prefer to make them myself because it, then I'm a little more in charge of what goes inside. And I try to watch the sugar in my family's diet a little bit. So I'm going to show you how to make a low-calorie peach turnover. Now, these are just some fresh peaches I sliced up. And I'm going to add just a little bit of this NutraSweet sweetener. They're really ripe. You could probably leave the sugar out altogether. Now, I'm just going to put on a little bit of cinnamon. And a little bit of nutmeg is wonderful with peaches and kind of give that a stir. You know, the nice thing about making these yourself is they're a lot less expensive than the ones you buy, and you've got a lot more control over what goes in them. I hate to bite into those uh, box ones and find out there's nothing inside. Okay, now we'll just lay the filling on one side. And now what you want to do is take your water and just moisten this edge so that when you fold it over, the dough will stick to itself. Just do two sides, just like that. And now we'll fold up the corners. 
Oop, back in there. Not cooperating with me today. There. Now take a fork and just pinch along the edges there. Hold all the peaches inside. Your family won't be able to tell the difference from the ones that come in the box until they bite inside and find out that there's actually filling in these. Now, is that fast enough for you? Dinner for two, main dish and dessert. Now, all we have to do is wrap it in the micro crisp. Let me get this guy out of my way here. Now, again, we're using a raw dough. So you want to remember to spray it with a little bit of a, a non-stick spray. Spray on the pan. Now, these are pretty big. So I'm going to lay it right on there like that. Remember the airplane wrap? Fold it in and fold it over. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and do one of each to save time today. So there we go. And because that's not frozen, that's not going to take that full four minutes to bake. That's will probably bake in, in closer to three minutes for that one. Did I spray that? I did, didn't I? <laughs> it's the only thing I ever forget. And our Wellington. Ooh. And just the basic wrap. Remember, you don't want too much overlap. You don't want that micro crisp cooking itself. So just enough to basically overlap. Now, you want to leave just a little bit of space because these are going to rise. And a little piece of tape on that. And I think we can cook these both in the microwave at the same time. Remember what I said, you're going to give it about an extra 50% of the time when you've got two things in there. So instead of four minutes for one, I'm going to cook both of these for about six minutes. Okay, there's the bell. Oh, smells wonderful. Now here's our chicken wellington. Ooh, that's a little bit warm. And here's our low-cal, sugar-free peach turnover. Oh, that looks wonderful. So we'll just top off our sugar-free peach turnover with a little low-fat yogurt and a quick sauce made out of raspberry preserves and a little bit of honey. That looks great. And a meal like this will make your family feel company special. Okay, now we've come to the real magic of Micro Crisp, cooking meat. You know, not only does Micro Crisp cook it faster, it actually cooks it better and healthier than meats cooked on the stove. And I can start with meat directly from the freezer and have a meal on the table in under 10 minutes. Now, I have three of these less than 10 minute meals to show you, so let's get started with some chicken. I'm sure you'll probably agree that the last thing a hungry person wants to find when they come home from work is a solid frozen piece of meat. So let me show you a fast way to cook this chicken in around six minutes. Now, when I cook meat, I start with a pie pan and line it with a paper towel. That'll catch any of the drips. And we'll place the micro crisp rack right in there. Now, go ahead and lay the micro crisp over the rack. And to allow the fats to drain away from the meat, you want to poke some little holes in the micro crisp. Now, here's a little trick I discovered. I took one of my old wooden spoons, sharpened it in the pencil sharpener. It's perfect for poking those little drain holes in the micro crisp. You don't need a lot of them, just right in the center. Now, this is a boneless chicken breast, and I'm just going to season it with a little seasoned salt and place it on the micro crisp. Now, we're going to go ahead and use the basic wrap. Just fold one end up over the other and secure it with a little piece of tape. And that's going to go in the microwave six minutes. You know, since I don't have to stand at the stove and watch it and turn it, that leaves me free to get the rest of the meal prepared. OK, now all I did was toss a little salad and heat up some mixed vegetables. And now we need our, is our chicken. And there it is, right on schedule. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Oh, that looks terrific. Now you can see it's wonderful and juicy. It's perfectly done. And all the fats drained away 
down in the bottom. Meat wasn't sitting in its own fat while it was cooking. And there's our disposable oven. Not much clean up there. And it was all done in under 10 minutes. Now we'll just add a light dressing and we'll have a fast, healthy meal. Okay, you know, I think we all know we should probably eat more fish, but frankly, until I found MicroCrisp, I just didn't like messing with it. This makes it fast and easy, and there's virtually no cleanup. Watch how simple. Now, just like with the other meats, I started with the pie pan, lined it with a paper towel, and set my MicroCrisp rack in there. Now we're just gonna lay on a sheet of MicroCrisp. And for this salmon steak, I'm gonna spray it with just a little of this nonstick spray. And we'll go ahead and poke those holes in it. This allows all the uh, juices to drain away from the meat, so the meat comes out nice and flaky. All right. Now, lay on that salmon steak. And I'm going to squeeze just a little bit of fresh lemon over it. Now, this is a wonderful salt-free seasoning that I use a lot for fish. And we'll put on some little pepper rings. Now this is just some zucchini and some yellow squash and we can steam those right along with that fish. And now I'm just gonna add a little parsley. Now if you're thinking what I'm thinking, looks like I shortchanged myself a little bit on the uh, micro crisp here, but that's where those little pieces we've been saving are gonna come in handy. I think this guy is just about right. It's just like when you're wrapping a Christmas present and it doesn't quite cover the box. There, see? We can fill right in with that. Now a little bit of tape, and no one will ever know. Be our secret. That piece of fish was about an inch thick, so that's going to bake for about seven minutes. Okay, I promised you a complete meal in under 10 minutes, so while our fish and vegetables are cooking, let's get a quick fettuccine side dish started. Now I'm using the fresh fettuccine, and this will boil in about four minutes. So I'm just gonna add that fettuccine and give it a little stir, maybe just a little bit more. And that's gonna need about four minutes to cook. Okay, our fettuccine's done. I'm just gonna drain it off. And back into the pan. Now there's our fish. Well, luckily we're not in a regular oven, so it's okay to just let it sit there for a couple of seconds. Now I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of light sour cream. And a little parsley. Some chives. And just a little bit of garlic. Oop, well a lot of garlic. <laughs> we'll toss that up. This is a wonderful light fettuccine. Kind of a Romanoff, I guess. Very low fat, very low calorie. Delicious. And it's a wonderful side dish with fish. Now all you need to do, out of there, is garnish that with just a little bit of Parmesan. And let's check our salmon. You know, I love cooking fish this way because the whole kitchen doesn't smell like fish. All right. Oh, that looks wonderful. It's beautifully done. It's a perfect way to cook fish. Okay, I promised you three great meals you could cook in under 10 minutes. So here's the third, my family's favorite shish kebab. And you know, beef is probably the ultimate challenge for a microwave. And you're not going to believe how well it cooks till you try it in your micro crisp. Now this is a beautiful eye of round roast, and I'm going to cut it up into some cubes. Now I hope you've ordered your miracle blade by now, because uh, this is the best knife I've ever used in my kitchen. Now I'm just going to cut this up into some cubes. Well, I guess I... And this way. And if you want to trim off any of that extra fat, that's a good place to use your little scissors. Then you can just trim off those extra little pieces like that. 
Now, I'm not going to go through all of this for you here because I've got some I already did. You know, you're going to find a lot of great uh, marinade recipes in the cookbook, but probably one of the easiest is just to put the meat in a bag with a little bit of bottled Italian dressing. Now, you can put this in to marinate before you go to work in the morning and let it sit in there all day long, and that makes the meat just beautiful and juicy. Okay, now let's assemble that uh, shish kebab here. You want to be sure and use uh, bamboo skewers because you can't put metal in the microwave. And I've got some vegetables here. I've got some cherry tomatoes. And we'll slap on a piece of meat. And a little bit of zucchini. And some mushrooms. You know, my family loves shish kebabs, I think, because everybody can make it the way they like it. My son, Bob, likes practically all meat on his. His girlfriend, April's a vegetarian, so she loads hers up with veggies. I like a little mixture of everything, and it's a real colorful meal that way. Let's see. Another piece of meat there. And one more zucchini for good measure. Okay, now all you have to do is use that tube wrap, roll it over, pull that end up, and I'm going to use two little pieces of tape, one at each end for a long tube like this, and lay it over on the rack. Now we'll do the second one here. This is a great party idea, too, because you can put out all the different, uh, you can use different kinds of meat as well. Little chicken cubes or, or uh, fish kebabs. Uh, shrimp is wonderful on a kebab. This one's getting a little short on meat here. One more piece. Okay. And roll it up. Now, depending on how many kebabs you're cooking, your time is going to vary. I think we've figured out that one takes about three minutes. Two will cook in about four and so on. You'll find all of these times in your cookbook, so you can refer to that whenever you're unsure. I got a little bit of uh, Italian dressing on there. My scotch tape won't stick. There we go. Okay, now that's going to cook in the microwave in about four minutes. Okay, I just prepared a bed of rice for those shish kebabs, and now let's see how they look. They smell terrific. Oh, and they look great, too. My tomatoes always fall off. No one will ever know. <laughs> oh, those look so good. But you know, seeing isn't believing. You're going to have to try this at home for yourself. How's that? Well, there you have it, from refrigerator to the table in under seven minutes. Now, you're going to find a whole section in your cookbook called stackable cooking. Now, these meals take a little bit longer than the single 10-minute meals, but cooking with the stackable cooking method, you'll be making enough food for maybe three or four people. Now, what you need to do the stack cooking is an uh, oven-proof casserole and a pie plate that'll fit on top and act as a lid for the casserole dish. Now, normally we'll be using the casserole to cook our side dish. In this case, I'm going to make an herbed rice. Now, this is a great light side dish to go along with the heartier meats like these barbecued ribs. That's right, I did say barbecued ribs in the microwave. Now, the recipe calls for a cup of instant rice and a cup of water. And I like to add about a teaspoon of chicken stock. You can use little envelopes or a bouillon cube or just this and sprinkle it on. And a little bit of poultry seasoning. Now, every rice dish I've ever seen seems to call for butter, but I always leave it out because it cuts the fat on the dish a little bit, and I don't think you'll miss the taste. Now, if you want to make this a complete side dish, you can add your vegetables, a little broccoli or a little green beans as well, and just give it a little bit of a stir. Now, that'll cook the same time as our meat. And for the meat, we're going to cook these barbecued ribs. Now, the uh, same technique for cooking meat applies here. You're first going to lay in that little paper towel. That's going to catch the drips. And then your micro crisp rack. Now, you'll need a good size sheet of the micro crisp, because we're cooking a lot of ribs here. That ought to do it. 
And remember, you want to poke those holes in it to allow the fats to drain away. This is why micro crisp cooking is so healthy, because all of these fats drain away from the meats. It's not sitting in its own juice. All right. Now we'll just lay on those ribs. Now, I just marinated these in a little bit of barbecue sauce for about 15 or 20 minutes. And I like to kind of put them on in a little square so they cook a little evenly. And we'll fold up the micro crisp. Now, remember, it's real important when you're cooking meat that the micro crisp be touching the meat, because that's what does the browning. So using your basic wrap, and just fold that up, and press it against the meat, and use a little piece of tape to secure it. Now, the pie plate these are in is going to become the lid for the casserole dish, and that whole thing's going to cook in just 15 minutes. I don't think you could heat the coals in your barbecue in 15 minutes. Oh, they smell incredible. Oh. All right. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, what do you think? Aren't those beautiful? And look, they're juicy and brown, just like they came off the barbecue. <laughs> now, aren't you glad that's not a pan you have to wash? This just might be the world's first disposable oven. Not much clean up there. Now, let's take a look at our side dish. Oh, yeah. Green beans and the rice. There's a meal for three or four people. 15 minutes, no cleanup. I don't see how you could beat that. I bet you never thought you could turn your microwave into a barbecue. OK, I'm going to make a potato side dish for you this time. Now, I sliced up these potatoes earlier and soaked them in a little water so they wouldn't turn brown. So we'll just drain them off and put them in our casserole dish. Now, you know, I made this dish in the Micro Crisp show, and a lot of people said they looked like they were swimming in butter. So I need to redeem myself here. You know, these are actually one of the lowest calorie, lowest fat ways to eat potatoes. All I use for this serving for three people is one tablespoon of light margarine in one tablespoon of water. Now, for seasonings, I've got a little bit of chives, some seasoned salt, a little garlic, and some parsley. And now I'm going to melt that in the microwave, oh, for about 15 minutes, 15 seconds, that is. OK. Now, this meal is in honor of my family, who very seldom eat a meal together and can never all decide on the same thing at the same time. One wants pork chops, I like chicken, and my son Christopher just got braces. So he needs something a little easier to chew. He likes meatloaf. Now, I don't blame him. I do make a great meatloaf. And I have kind of a tricky way to make it. You know, I discovered a long time ago, if you make a meatloaf, you eat it today and tomorrow and the next day until it's gone. So what I do is I mix up my meatloaf mixture, but I form it into these little individual patties like this. Now I can cook one or two or three pieces of meatloaf whenever I want. That's right. We're going to cook three meats all at the same time in the microwave in our micro crisp. Now, these are direct from the freezer, so they're going to take a little bit of extra time. I'm going to sprinkle them with just a little bit of seasoning, and we'll fold up the micro crisp. Again, just the basic wrap. You want to be sure it's touching the meat, and a piece of tape to hold it down. Now, finish up our potatoes. I think our seasonings are ready over here. Oh, just another couple of seconds. Let's get these ready to go here. There we go. Let me stir this around just a little bit to melt that butter. That's one tablespoon of light margarine in the whole dish. So it's really a low fat, low calorie way to eat potatoes. OK, spread on the seasoning and top it with our uh, meat dish and into the microwave 
for 20 minutes. Now, if those meats were thawed, this would only take about 15. But since they're frozen, I'm going to go ahead and allow a little extra time. Okay. Oh, this smells so great. And I can't think of any other way that you can cook three meats all at the same time. Oh, look at that. That chicken is beautiful and juicy. The pork chop is perfect. And that meatloaf. You notice I have a little bit of cheese in my meatloaf. I add that, it keeps it nice and juicy and moist. My kids call it cheeseburger meatloaf. Now, let's take a look at our side dish. Oh, look at those potatoes. They look great. And remember, these are low calorie and low fat. You don't have to tell your family that if you don't want to. This is a great dinner for three. And it took only 20 minutes. And that's because those meats were all frozen when I started. Remember, if I'd started with already thawed meats, it would have only taken about 15. What do you think? Doesn't that look great? Now, there's a meal that'll keep everybody happy. You know, breakfast really is the most hectic time to try to get a meal on the table. And I have a stack cooking idea that's going to make your mornings a lot easier. I'm going to show you how to make a scrambled omelet. Now, when I was testing omelets in the microwave, I found the biggest problem is they tend to cook at the edges much faster than in the center. So here's a little trick. If you just place a small dish upside down in the center of your bowl, that eliminates the middle of the omelet and it cooks real evenly. Now, I'm going to spray this with just a little bit of Pam. And I've got three beaten eggs here. And we'll go ahead and pour those right in. Now, you can put just about anything you like in an omelet. I've got some uh, green peppers and some onions here. And I'm just going to chop up a little bit of tomato. You know, I've talked earlier about this Miracle Blade. It really is the best knife I've ever used. Look how easily it cuts that tomato. You know, if you want to learn more about the Miracle Blade, stay tuned at the end of this video because we have a special Miracle Blade offer for MicroCrisp users. Okay, now I'm just going to add a little cheese. Now, for our pigs in a blanket. I went ahead and made three of them to kind of save a little time. What these are is a refrigerator biscuit wrapped around a brown and serve sausage and then rolled in the micro crisp. So all you do is kind of pinch that biscuit around the sausage and then just go ahead and roll it and tape it. And that'll bake the whole thing in just seven minutes. You know, the great thing about this is you don't have to stand around the kitchen and watch those eggs and, and sausage while they cook. So it gives you time to go on and get yourself ready in the morning. Okay, there's breakfast. This is such a fast and easy way to make breakfast. And my kids love these. Oh, look, this little piggy just popped right out of his blanket. These are so great. Just the little brown and syrup sausages wrapped in a biscuit. And they're dynamite dipped in a little syrup, too. Now, take a look at this omelet. Remember what I told you? Putting that uh, dish in the center eliminates the problem of that cooking unevenly. Oh, that looks delicious. Get it loose there. Perfect omelet every time. Now that's a fun breakfast. I thought we'd finish up with a great dessert. You know, nothing impresses people more than fruit served with homemade shortcake, but it doesn't have to be difficult. I'm just going to start with some biscuit mix and sweeten it up by adding about four or five teaspoons of sugar. Now, you need about a tablespoon of melted margarine. This makes it a little easier. We'll just use this. And about a quarter of a cup of milk. 
This is kind of new for me because I don't usually measure. <laughs> now we'll just go ahead and stir that up. Now your dough is going to be kind of sticky at first. That's just about right. And if you get it mixed, I'm going to go ahead and turn it out onto a floured board. of it out of there. And now you just want to knead this till it loses its stickiness. So just keep folding it over and pulling in some extra flour and patting it down. And you'll be able to tell when it's not sticky anymore because your fingers won't stick in there when you press it down. You know, this is so much better than those little, uh, we call them sponge cakes they buy at the grocery store. Kind of taste like sponges, too. Family will really think you went to a lot of trouble, and you don't have to tell them how easy it is. OK, now, once it's lost its stickiness, you want to just kind of pat it out into a little rectangle. And we're going to cut that into four pieces. Use my little biscuit cutter again. And now we have to do is wrap it in the micro crisp. And those are going to bake in only three minutes. Now remember, we're using a uh, raw dough. So we're going to want to spray that microfish with a little of the nonstick spray. And just lay our shortcake right on there. Let's turn them this way so that it'll fit better. And pull up the edges. Leave just a little bit of room for them to rise. And little piece of tape right at the seam. Now all you have to do is set them on the rack and into the microwave three minutes. OK, there's our shortcake. And my strawberries are all ready here. I just sliced up some fresh berries. You could use peaches, berries, any kind of berries. I add a little kiwi sometime for some color. Surprise everybody, they like it that way. Now, here's our shortcake. And the scissors. Oh. These are so much better than anything you ever bought at the store, and hot, too. <laughs> Now, we're just going to put those berries on top. And what do you think? I think it needs a little whipped cream. Perfect. You know, people always say to me, Kathy, you make it look so easy. Well, as you can see, using Micro Crisp is easy. And I know you're going to have such great luck that soon you'll be sending me your recipes. And I'll look forward to hearing from you. So until next time, happy Micro Crisping. My friend Wayne Harvey introduced me to these knives, and they're the most incredible set of knives I've ever used. Stay tuned while Wayne tells you about the Miracle Blade. On Miracle Blade 1, you saw me cut the hammer. I want to show you something you've never seen before. How about this? A block of solid marble. Hey, if it'll cut through this, it'll cut through anything. Everybody watch. You've got to kind of scoot in real close so you can see this one. When I tell you that you can cut frozen food with this knife, I'm serious. I mean frozen pork chops, lamb chops, steaks. That's the knife you want to use. You see, I'm giving that knife more abuse in 10 seconds than you'd give it in 10 years. You don't have to believe me, but those shavings don't lie. I mean all the way out to the very tip. Take a look for yourself. You know, we don't care if you men been out there trimming the trunk off your Christmas tree are cutting frozen food every time you pick it up. That knife still cuts that same exact way, whether it's today, tomorrow, next week, next year, every time you use it. In fact, one lady even asked me, she says, yeah, but could you still cut them real thin? <laughs> Bless her stingy little heart. <laughs> well, I found out later she ran a board and now she's going to starve them to death with this knife. Look, you slice tomatoes any thinner than this, I think they'd only have one side. Now, that takes a pretty sharp knife to slice tomatoes that thin after the abuse I put that knife through.
fed up with knives that just don't cut it? Now you can throw them away forever. Say yes to the new Miracle Blade 2. Join over 4.5 million smart buyers. Here's the Miracle Blade promise to stay razor sharp the first time, the fourth time, a lifetime. A computer designed precision tool made in America from surgical steel. Now the best is even better. Look at the new custom handles. Great looking, better balance and control. Perfect for cutting and slicing. And talk about sharp. Watch this powerful Miracle Blade cut right through leather, wood, steel, even marble, and you still cut this red ripe tomato. From roasts and ribs to poultry and frozen vegetables. Hot bread, angel food cake, no problem. And the Miracle Blade makes carving a snap. The Miracle Blade 2 comes with this remarkable guarantee. If your Miracle Blade becomes dull or damaged for any reason at any time, send it back and we'll replace it free. Pick up the phone, order your Miracle Blade 2 right now, and we'll give you a second Miracle Blade free. Here's the Miracle Blade 2 special offer to Micro Chris customers. You receive two Miracle Blades, one for the kitchen, one extra for your boater camper or to give to a friend. The American Angler 2 fillet knife with the Miracle Edge, great for everything from filleting fish to trimming melons. The heavy duty utility knife made for even the toughest jobs around the house and garage. The Miracle Edge paring knife that will make cutting fruits and vegetables a breeze. And the bonus pack of four matching steak knives, all with that same Miracle Edge. You've seen Miracle Blade 2 on television for $39.95. Now you can own these Miracle Blade knives for only $19.95, and Miracle Blade includes this lifetime guarantee. If for any reason the blade becomes dull or damaged, even if the damage is your fault, simply return it to the factory and receive a replacement free. To take advantage of this Micro Crisp Miracle Blade special offer, just call our customer service line toll-free, 1-800-998-8750, or you can mail your check or money order to Micro Crisp Miracle Blade Offer, Box 8033, Culver City, California, 90233. Include $4.95 for shipping and handling. Texas residents at 8%. Stay tuned for another exciting offer from Microcrisp. Display your Miracle Blade 2 set in this beautiful solid North American red oak knife block. Custom designed to hold all the knives in your Miracle Blade set, the golden oak finish will enhance your kitchen for years to come. And to complete the set, we'll send you four additional matching steak knives absolutely free. All this for the low, low price of only $24.95, including the free bonus steak knives. To order your knife block and free steak knives, call our customer service lines toll free 1-800-998-8750 or you can mail your check or money order to Micro Crisp Miracle Blade Offer, Box 8033, Culver City, California 90233. Include $6.95 for shipping and handling, Texas residents at 8% tax. Order both the Miracle Blade 2 set and the knife block and save 10%, both for just $39.95 plus $8.95 shipping and handling. Order now.